Hey YouTube fans, this is Paul and this is uh, some audio I'm adding to uh, a voiceover for the, the video that you're getting ready to see here. Um, unfortunately, I didn't catch any sheep's head that day. Um, this is a video that has me skunked, um, but I want to keep it real. I want to keep it pertinent and uh, not every day is uh, a, a day of catching. Um, but I certainly gave it a good try. I probably had eight or nine different uh, stops out there in uh, the Nassau Sound area that I was fishing at uh, this day. Um, tried hard. I was using uh, fresh scraped barnacles for bait. And uh, I was using a new rod and reel that I'm really in love with. And uh, the little John boat's running great, Mud Minnow 2. Um, so everything was perfect except there wasn't any fish to be found. Um, I tried hard, deeper, deeper water, shallower water. Um, this was all outgoing tide on this particular trip. And everything that I did today, or that day rather, um, was uh, right after a new moon, uh, just a day or two after a new moon, and a lot of feedback that I've gotten from folks already online, in Facebook groups, um, you know, point out that it can be really tough for sheep's head uh, right after a new moon. Uh, right before a full moon, on the other hand, is usually really good. And, uh, you know, some of these cold fronts that we've been getting, we've had a, a lot of up and down temperatures. Uh, the water's cooled off quite a bit in, these, uh, in the sound and the offshore water's coming in. Um, so... Um, that's why we call it fishing, right? Um, because you just never know what's in their minds. Um, but anyway, if you want to continue uh, to see the video, hopefully um, you might get something out of it or just see. I've put some music in there and I'll do some voiceover here and there. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, thanks for subscribing. And uh, it's only up from here. <laughs> Good morning, inshore head shakers. This is Paul getting ready to shove off and see if we can go catch sheep's head this morning um, we have the beginning of outgoing tide we're near a new moon and uh, we're actually on a uh, waning crescent so we're a couple days past the new moon uh, this is uh, winter time fishing basically so the mud's cold the water's cold it's uh, in the 50s uh, water temperature today, uh, 55, 56, um, just about everywhere. Um, certainly the sun's going to warm it up inshore here, but uh, a nice sunny day, um, but we're going to see. So uh, stay tuned, and we're going fishing. There's three apps that I use uh, quite frequently uh, before fishing. Um, the first one here is called Windy and uh, it does a real good job of uh, pointing a lot of things out uh, current. Uh, the boating app that I've got here, I love this because it's uh, dynamic charts. Um, so as the tide rises and falls here, uh, you can see water recedes and the, the contours uh, update with appropriate depth. And then uh, the other app I like is called Wind Finder. And I use that to kind of double check myself against Windy. It's to me good to have two apps uh, come together. Uh, and then uh, here's, here's Mud Minnow 2. And uh, there's quite a bit to all of this. And uh, I've put one video together. Um, but uh, she's, she's doing great. This is a 14 foot John boat, 1436. And uh, off we go. I've got a remote GoPro camera. Um, actually, I have two GoPro cameras that I'll be using out here doing my videos. And then also my iPhone uh, that I have mic'd up uh, with a remote mic sensor. So. Uh, you know, I don't get any wind noise or whatever. So that's uh, pretty much what I'll be using for the voice uh, components of, of anything that I'm filming. Um, but Mud Minnow scoots right along. It's a 9.8 Tahatsu outboard. 
and I'm certainly not under any kind of full throttle here. Um, as you can see, my head's always on throttle, especially or on a swivel, especially going under the bridges. Uh, I'm very uh, respectful to the kayak folks that are out here, and uh, you know, I absolutely make sure I'm not waking anybody or really anything that I that I can help. Um, definitely take my time. Coming up to the bridges here, this the bridge that I decided to start under. Um, as you can see, I've got uh, quite a swift outgoing tide, and so I barely have to do anything but throttle back, and it throws me under the bridge pretty good here. Um, my technique was pretty simple. I want to be up against the uh, pilings, and I really want to be able to jig straight up and straight down. Um, it really improves feeling the nibble, the hit, however you want to describe it for sheep's head it's always been a strange bite from them because um, they'll kind of take it in their mouth more than like chomp and take off they kind of put it in their mouth and throw it around on their their big chewer uh, cartilage pieces um, so it's a lot of uh, it's it's a completely different bite and a lot of folks get frustrated trying to catch sheep's head but I'm very aware of how they bite and to me the best solution to put in your advantage is to have straight up and down uh, jigging. I'm using three quarter ounce uh, bottom sweeper type jigs that are painted and uh, using fresh uh, scrape barnacles. Actually there'll be a piece of video here that'll show me actually scraping that little tray there is what I use to uh, to uh, keep my scrapings in. It's got a flat side so I can put it straight up against the piling and scrape down into it without losing a lot of barnacles uh, that you might lose if you're using like a round bucket. See, I've got more surface area against the wall here uh, for scraping. Um, it just kind of works out a little more efficient as far as I'm concerned. Putting uh, two or three barnacles on the jig head and then sending that back down. What I cut out of the videos was me actually also spending some time actually just scraping barnacles loose into the water current um, it's the equivalent of ringing the dinner bell um, barnacles are definitely an inshore food source for uh, for sheep's head um, I think their diet like any fish changes over time and location sheep's have it offshore probably eating something completely different um, but anyway, yeah, right here I'm getting ready to do a little scraping. And you can see I put the flat side of that uh, tray against the, the wall and then I'm scraping straight into it. And not losing any barnacles around the edges. It's dropping straight in nicely. So it's a nice quick couple scrapes. I've got some fresh barnacles. I can come back to it later, scrape again, or my next spot I can scrape again. Um, but um, I, I prefer to use the barnacles that are right there where I'm trying to fish. Um, I don't know if different barnacles have different flavors or different types of uh, whatever, how barnacles grow. So instead of scraping one place and taking them clear over to someplace else, um, I'm going to scrape right there on the piling um, that I'm trying to fish at. So. Uh, up and down we go and this was uh, repeated over and over again and to not make it a totally boring video um, I'm not over dosing too much of that um, like I said at the very beginning I didn't catch anything this is me now running back to the to the boat ramp and uh, maybe a little disappointed but you know what it's always great being out there um, I've got the silence turned up full blast. I'm listening to the birds and the waves and the, just the, the motion of the water. It's easy on the eyes. It's good for the soul. Um, and uh, I just enjoy the heck out of it. Um, so it's all encompassing and maybe, the, or not maybe, I mean when we get a video posted here that's got some fish getting caught, um, it makes those days even sweeter because uh, I think you need a skunk or two in your pocket to keep you humble and uh, to keep you thirsty for how can I do something different or better the next time. And uh, let's just face it, sometimes there aren't fish where you're fishing. Um, 
So, um, I'll let the music keep playing here. That's the end of the video, pretty much. Um, totally appreciate you guys watching, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.